I treat my land like the dearest person. I'm attentive. I watch it and listen to it. I try to satisfy all of its whims. You will get back from the earth what you put into it. If you give it a lot and put your heart and soul in it, it will pay you back tenfold. And if you give it nothing and only treat it as a consumer, then of course it will give nothing. There is a saying, earth is the mother of wealth. When I was given a plot of land, I was very happy, because I'd been looking forward to that for a very long time. And the time when I sought the first grain and gathered the first harvest were moments of true happiness and euphoria. Quails are even mentioned in the Bible. It was quail meat that the people of Israel ate while walking through the desert. This bird also evokes interest from the scientific point of view. This species was the first to be incubated in space. Geneticists often conduct tests on quails, as many generations of this bird can be traced in a short period of time. They grow rapidly. Just imagine, there is a neck, and in only 60 days it is already a mature bird. That's just two months. Five generations can change in a year. Where else can you observe such a genetic situation? Nowhere. Not in any other species of bird. Whales are also interesting because of their vital energy. I can feel it when I enter the farm. It's so soothing and full of energy. It's hard to describe with words. You need to feel it for yourself. In Ukraine, there are about 560 enterprises specializing in breeding quail, 10 of which are fairly large. They raise about 100 to 150,000 birds. About 600 million quail eggs are produced a year. When we started this business, there were virtually no industrial technologies for quail farming, and the necessary information was not available. Quails were mainly the trade of amateurs, and existing farms were small, and they only served certain population segments, the Communist Party elite. I've been breeding quails for about 20 years now. Before I started farming, I'd been a beekeeper and worked in trade. I started by selling live flowers. But I realized I didn't enjoy doing that, so I started an active search. I saw promise in quail breeding. I noticed that there was very high demand, but no supply on the market for this product. When we took the first egg to the market, people started asking where they can buy that. And it was then that I realized that it was both a profitable and useful business. My daughter had health problems at that time. Doctors said it was due to the fact that we lived in a zone near Chernobyl. They recommended drinking quail eggs. Quails are very interesting birds in terms of speed of growth and their characteristics. Quail eggs contain a concentration of vitamins and trace elements five times higher than those found in chicken eggs.
My biggest dream is to create baby food based on quail meat. That's why I constantly monitor the market so that I would be able to sign an agreement if such a manufacturer appears. In terms of energy, this meat is lean. It is rich in selenium, which helps to maintain the immune system at a decent level or modulate the body's resistance to infection and viruses. It is also rich in vitamin D, which helps children to fight rickets, which helps people who have fractured bones restore their calcium metabolism. The leanest and most healthy meat for children is quail meat. We try to bring the feeding and containment conditions of the birds as close as possible to natural ones. The popularization of organic matter has now begun, and I also considered growing organic grains myself. Feed the birds with it, and you end up having a natural product, which would be even more beneficial for a young body. I am as yet unable to control the grain group that is part of the feed. Today the diet of the birds contains purely organic millet. There is not a single drop of chemicals in it. Yes, it is not a 100% organic diet, but even if it's partial, even if it's 20%, it's still better than nothing. I've been watching the birds I grow for many years, and they look significantly better than when they were consuming a completely non-organic diet. Even such a small percentage of organic matter affects their condition favorably. Now we're going to visit the fields leased by the farm. We sowed millet and wheat this year, and we've gathered a good harvest. Our ultimate goal is to switch to 100% cultivation of grain on our own fields and get good harvests at the expense of organic matter that we get from our quails instead of organic matter from mineral fertilizers. Such fertilizer improves fertility. In addition, this is effective use of waste from poultry production. When production volumes increased, the issue arose of processing farm organic waste. So I started developing a biogas plant. I'd been working on it for a long time, since 2000. We're now near the control system of the biogas plant, which processes organic waste from the farm. We get fertilizer from pure waste, which has a certificate that allows it to be used in organic farming. We put it on the fields. The uniqueness of this machine is in the fact that it works in pure waste without any additives, like chemical reagents, or other biological materials. In other words, we only put quail droppings and water in there. That's it. This installation consists of a receiving chamber, hydrolysis chamber and a methane tank, where the fermentation process takes place. The waste that comes in on the line ends up in the chamber, where it is prepared. Here, water is added to the droppings, then they are mixed, and then pumps pump it into the hydrolysis chamber. It stays there for a day. Then it is pumped into the methane tank, where the fermentation process takes place. This system works in both manual and automatic mode. Controlling this system does not require a higher education or special knowledge. It is extremely simple. According to our calculations, the machine produces 200 cubic meters of biogas a day. Its main purpose is quick and efficient processing of quail droppings. One kilogram of dry waste can produce 1.3 to 1.4 cubic meters of gas. 
Якщо брати такий послід, one kilogram of fresh dropping turns into 0.3 to 0.4 cubic meters of gas. Ні разу не зупинялося. The machine has been running for four years in a row, and it hasn't stopped once. It produces gas all the time. Why did I choose a biogas plant? Because after fermentation in the plant, the droppings turn into a valuable organic fertilizer which is beneficial for plants. The indicators were excellent. The main purpose of this machine was not to use its electric and heat energy, as its volume is too small for that. We needed it primarily for processing organic matter for the farm's technological needs. We can use this gas to heat the farm's rooms. In 2014, when I started the machine, it became known abroad, and scientists from the Netherlands, Japan, Baltic States and the Czech Republic started visiting me. Even an American farmer who also breeds poultry came to me because he was wondered how we processed pure waste into biogas. They were all impressed with what they saw. We have a quail farm, which is the bread and butter of our business. And we have agriculture that will provide the farm with grains. And we have a biogas plant that processes organic waste from the farm, which does not spoil the ecology and produces organic fertilizers that go onto the fields. So it ends up being a close natural cycle. Fields, poultry, waste recycling, field again. In the end, we get diet quail meat and eggs. When I came to this land, I knew that my prospects were here, my work, perhaps the meaning of my life. I was happy when I realized it was something I wanted to do. When the first seed fell into the earth, that was also a moment of happiness, every day's happiness. The problem is that recently, and this is a problem in the whole world, people have been thinking up more negative things. Rather than trying to find positive things in life, there were also difficulties, and there was even despair. There are moments in one's work when you just want to give up on everything and say, I've had enough. But then some time passes, you rethink that and realize that you were wrong to think that. That you need to roll up your sleeves and keep working. Because nobody will do it for you. You don't understand that when you are young. Of course, the understanding comes with age. It's the wisdom of life, as they say. There is a good saying that I often cite as an example to my employees. I don't need you to live in order to work. I need you to work in order to live. I don't need feats of labor. I need you to perform your tasks and perform them well. That's it. And when you and everyone else do their part in the work, the puzzle comes together, and we end up with a job well done. That's all. What is that?